Dear colleagues, this is a mature intumescent cataract with coloboma iris. Let us observe this surgery. This is the main incision on the posterior aspect of the limbus with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratom. The incision is at around 11 o'clock. This is a side port on the right side of the main incision about 3 o'clock hours away and this is another side port on the left side of the main incision at about the same distance away. Now an air bubble is injected into the anterior chamber and beneath this air bubble tripan blue 0.06 percent dye is applied over the anterior capsule of this white cataract and now this is a bit of adrenaline after this the dye is washed out and then 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose that is SPMC is used as the viscoelastic substance to fill up the anterior chamber and now is the time to do capsulorexis I take a 26 case bent needle cystitum and before that I saw there is chemosis conjunctiva is sole enough so I made some punctures so that these chemosis gets reduced in a short time the anti capsule has been incised and some milky fluid has come out since there is positive pressure inside the lens I decided to do a small rexis first followed by optimum sized rexis the small rexis is made through this small opening some superficial cortical lens matter is removed so the intralenticular pressure gets nicely reduced once the intralenticular pressure gets reduced the tendency of the rexis to run to periphery is no longer there so this is a nice technique to do rexis in intumescent cataracts now 2% ASPMC is injected again a vana scissor is taken a small cut is made at the margin of the minirexis at around 8 o'clock uteta forceps is then used to hold this capsular tag and do a continuous curvilinear capsulorexis of adequate size in coloboma iris at the area of coloboma there can be genular dehiscence but in this case it was not there if I notice genular dehiscence I put a CTR but in this case since there was no genular dehiscence CTR was not required And now is the time to introduce the phaco needle into the anterior chamber. Here it is. The tip of the phaco needle goes in. It bevel down. The handpiece is turned. Bevel is made up. And now the nucleus is chopped into several fragments. This is the first chop. This is another chop. This is the another chop. And this is one more. 
So by several chops, the nucleus have been divided into five fragments. Now each fragment is emulsified by ultrasonic energy and it is aspirated. Ultrasonic energy used in this case is 65 percent. Flow rate is 45 ml per minute and vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. Now, in this case, there is no epinucleus covering the posterior capsule. Once we see this, we must be very careful while emulsifying the last piece because since there is no epinuclear sheet covering the posterior capsule, the risk of posterior capsular rent is more in such cases. So I am using this posterior capsule protector. It's a thick instrument and we get a lot of space over this instrument to emulsify the fragment. And in no way the posterior capsule comes to the tip of the phaco needle. And now Visco is a small nuclear fragment. We have to remove that first. It is small, it will come out through the main wound. Here it is. This is called scorting out with Simco. Just aspirate. You don't have to catch it, it will follow the Simco if you apply some vacuum at the aspirating port of the Simco. Now I am cleaning the cortical lens matter by this thin 23 gauze Simco itself. Going through the left side port. Yes there's lot of cortex still there in the sub incisional area. So we have to do something for this. This is hydro polish. If we just irrigate the lens fibers sticking to the posterior capsule gets loosened and we can easily remove them by irrigation and aspiration. Yes, the cortical cleanup should be thorough. You cannot leave any cortex anywhere. This is some more lens fibers being removed from two o'clock. And now cortical cleanup is complete. The capsular bag and the antechamber is filled up with visco again. And then in this case, I'm going to use a B cartridge. So I'm enlarging the main wound very little, small, just say by two millimeter, sorry, 0.2 millimeter. So the incision has become about three millimeter in size. Now here goes the intraocular lens through a B cartridge. This is a single piece monofocal intraocular lens. The lens is dialed in such a way 
that the haptics are about 90 degree away from the main wound so that we can go behind the eye well and clean the capsula back remove visco from the capsula back and now I take the Simco irrigate for some time go into the capsular bag behind the eye well irrigate the capsular bag and thus I remove lot of viscoelastic substance from the capsular bag as well as from the anterior chamber and now I take the bimanual irrigation aspiration and do some more lavage of the anterior chamber this is only irrigation now I use irrigation and aspiration together thus some quality time has been spent to remove visco from the anterior chamber and from the capsular back this is a bit of air a small air bubble and this is pilocarpin my aim is to constrict the people and to do superior sphincterectomy superior sphincterotomy just incise the sphincter peeply superiorly why because you will see that in coloboma iris the superior pupillary margin almost obstructs the visual axis so if we do superior, superior sphincterotomy if we just cut the sphincter pupillary superiorly just on cut the pupil will go little up and it will be easier for the patient to focus on the phobia here goes the micro scissor through the side port and just cut the sphincter pupillary superiorly this is a nice cut and this will serve the purpose and now the visco that has been used for this purpose has to be removed nicely again Simco first lot of time is spent in cleaning the visco we can also use a vitrectomy cutter to just cut the superior sphincter pupillary just one or two cuts serves the purpose that can be called superior sphincterectomy and this just incising the in sphincter pupillary with a scissor can be called superior sphincterotomy yes 
the visco has been cleaned nicely this is closure of the side ports moxie has been applied This is closure of the left side port. Corneal stroma on either side of these stab incisions are hydrated and these stab wounds close. Now we are towards the end of the surgery. Friends, this is a totally unedited surgery. So consider that you are watching a uh, live surgery. So after thorough cleaning of the viscoelastic substance, the anterior chamber is formed very nicely by the Simco cannula. Here it is. The anterior chamber is being formed very nicely. And then dialing the lens forming the anterior chamber again and then the case is concluded after checking the integrity of the wounds and the integrity of the wounds are checked few drops of moxie is applied over the ocular surface and the case is concluded